so hi, today I will talk about kernel exploitation, about some buffer flows, and introduce some new technique. Uh, it will be kind of complicated, so we go through some, some checkpoints. We turn some stack overflow to buffer flow. We introduce some new post bank technique. And so we deal with some slope, slope and other things. And uh, we will take it by example, uh, which we rediscovered last year. Um, there will be some our modified Trinity Fuzzer. Uh, uh, we modified Trinity Fuzzer um, for Android. And we discovered this uh, in in current uh, joint phones, which because this bug is about splice vulnerability, uh, known from 2012, and but it's applicable for most of the phones and the current market. And triggering this vulnerability was quite simple, uh, just uh, two threads. So one of the uh, resizing the uh, side of the pipe buffers, and the other one just uh, mod just calls to spice function, Cisco. And it was back uh, at uh, pi buffers, uh, which is basically the index, uh, the counter of the buffers. And uh, that means it was uh, out of lock uh, access in setting the size and in this spice to pipe. And what's happened? It was that. Uh, uh, when you have uh, this pipe buffers uh, at, at low index, it will not al it will do fast malloc. So it will it basically use uh, the buffers located in the stack, and when it's the big value, it will it will malloc it will k malloc the the buffers from the pool. And in this case, uh, which was the panic lock, it was that uh, it was racing to increase the um, buffer and buffer counter. And uh, it was uh, it was used before was used uh, buffers from the from the stack, but at the end it was checked this value again, and uh, if it's big, uh, it it will k free that uh, that blocks memory blocks, and but it's on the stack and free on the stack means a panic. But it was not only the case of this particular function and vim splice, but it was also introduced in it presents on many other functions. And we choose uh, under candidate. It was a uh, default file spice rate, and it was really perfect because uh, it have uh, free buffers, free uh, free uh, members on the stack which can be used. And in the one of the members, you can overwrite with pointer and with page size. And this pointer points to your your data which can be controlled, and it can cause the stack overflow. And that's really nice. Uh, that's one lim limitation is that uh, we overflow with uh, some pattern the kernel pointer to our data and the uh, and the size. Uh, the second second was uh, on the issue that uh, in Android you have plenty plenty ROMs. That means that uh, you implement some let's say exploit for one ROM and and which uh, is uh, the stack looks. Totally different, like in under ROM, because it depends on compile on how it's compiled, about some de defines, etc. So in, you have to when when you go uh, by attacking the stack. In this case, it's possible because there's no canaries included in Linux kernel in Android in in this function. And in this case, uh, you can you can target the return pointer or you can target the params or local variables. But every time when you target different ROMs. We have to specify because the stack view looks different. And uh, doing uh, this stack pawn is possible because uh, it, it panic was about k free on the stack, and it's most likely happened most of the times. But you you can you have one option: the raise two times. The first time to increase it and overflow the stack, and second time before it will be finally k free, it we will decrease it again. But in this case, you have a very low possibility to do it because you have a really small window for racing two times. That's the first thing. And second thing is that uh, even if you do it, uh, you need to handle with all the forms. So that can be a problem. And it will be not reliable enough. So what's next? But next can be buffer overflow. You can overflow to pool, not to stack. And tactic will be that. Uh, you will at the beginning you will write, it will be this um, 
pi buffers a little bit, so it will be not allocated on the phase, phase, phase alloc from the stack, but it will, it will be to k malloc from, it will be to k malloc, and it will, it will be raised to be even bigger, so it will overflow at the pool. And so at the end, when it will be k free, it's, it's everything is fine. You just overflow at the pool and it can survive. But then the problem is that the overflow not only with one structure, not only with some kernel, and kernel pointer and size, but you have also two other members, which is overflowing at the same time. So that means that you overflow not only with, uh, from one slab, but you overflow in three different places at the same time. So it can be a really big problem when you want to build some stable exploitation or some routing. So we need to handle with this one. And the other thing that I mentioned before, that in this case you not overflow with totally arbitrary data. You overflow with kernel pointer and with the page size. And the kernel pointer is this feature, uh, you have one feature that it points to your to data, to your data which you can control. But on the other side, we can we can avoid to overflow overflowing from three places and we can we can overflow just from two. But for this we need to exit sooner. That means that it will fail by reading uh, to, to our kernel pointer, to our some memory which points this kernel pointer to. So, but, so this is a side effect. That, uh, that means that on this memory, which, is, which points this kernel pointer to, it's not controlled that anymore. But on the other side, it's, it's big pros, it, big uh, plus is that you overflow just only with two, uh, with two buffers in two places at the one time, not at the three places. So it can escalate your exploitation rate. But that means you, not, you are not able to control that anymore. Only if you don't use pool spray. And, but pool spraying can be kind of hard, especially when you have a 60-bit platform. And uh, but for that we introduced some new post paying technique. Um, we very use we reuse also this default file spice rate function because uh, you have the uh, alloc, alloc page which uh, will basically allocate for a new page and uh, kernel reads which reads the data to that page. But it have on the other side uh, some problem because you can allocate, uh, you can create only about 212 pipes in one process. So it can be a problem, but on the side, when you have uh, kernel under space randomization, randomization um, not kernel space randomization, but when you, when your allocator uh, gives you by kmalloc some randomized memory, basically it's good enough because when you have, for example, 108 pipes and every time you try to allocate some memory, it will allocate something down the place. So you will repeat this many times, and you will cover a lot of uh, address space. And you basically fill uh, all the address space with your pattern. So, but it's kind of complicated to do this pool spray in this way, because you need to use pipe and ship data to this pipe uh, with splice, and take at the same time the default file splice rate uh, function. But for example, for sockets, for pipe, it's, uh, it took under, under function. But for TTI, it uses exactly this function that we need. And for this, we just use pipe, splicing to write to, write to TTI, the splice uh, to pipe, and we got it. And we repeat it many times. We write for a few seconds, and we get sprites memory. And it's really lightweight, because you just uh, use about, let's say, 512 pipes, and it's no, no big memory pressure, but you feel all kernel uh, with your pattern. And when it comes to implementing this kind of, let's say, not easy, easy stuff, let's say um, it, it is a lot of uh, steps that you need to fulfill, you need to implement some under, uh, some, some mechanism, some clean way that you, in under, under project, you will reuse it. So that's why it doesn't matter. And at the end, you just end with this one. That's you just provide the buffer and size a buffer, and you we will spray through the memory. And let's say wait for a few, but wait for some time frame to be the memory space uh, successfully spread with your content. And at the same time, why does it matter is uh, because when you implement uh, this kind of vulnerability, like for example, this splice, 
it also needs a lot of steps. Um, because up to buffer overflow, you need to also fulfill a few steps. And after, after buffer overflow, you need to fulfill some other steps. And it's kind of complicated the process because it's a really different uh, exploitation these days, like it was, for example, before 10 years. Now it's uh, um, make, make some proof concept for exploitation. It's really kind of coming to be a difficult task, and you need some engineering put inside. And uh, it's more, more be like a developer, less be than the hacker. And on the side, as I said, that OK, now we can, uh, we can spray our data, we can overflow. But the other problem is that uh, still we need to overflow to something that we already control. And for this, can can have some words, for example, some randomization when it comes to kmalloc, return the chunks. And also that, uh, but it's a limitation because when, when you, when you get some uh, chunk from the kmalloc, it will just uh, return from some current slab. And so these slab are organized by size. And every time, it's basically can be reused, this slab, uh, chunks from the slab. Uh, so what's the plan? plan is that uh, you, you allocate many, chain, m many memory mem many memory objects uh, uh, the same size. So that means you create a lot of slabs. Uh, so you uh, will create and empty a lot of slabs. And what you do next, that you will free on that red points, that you will free some, some of the objects, and then uh, try to allocate your buffer on, on the objects which, which can be overflowed from. And later on, you will, you will try to trigger the overflow and pawn. It can be also, it's not so stable, and it can be some experimenting. Uh, but basically, this idea which, which works. It's not 100%, but it's, it works quite stable. Uh, what can be complication? In, in the splice case, it was not too much, uh, it was not, uh, not this case, but in a lot of uh, other exploits and uh, other vulnerabilities can be this case that uh, memory object separation. That means that, for example, in Linux, you have uh, caches. And in Linux cache, is sometimes in many, many times used for different objects, have some different caches. And that means that uh, in this, in this case, it's only this object or some few, few other objects, but you cannot, you cannot manipulate with those objects. So, so it can be a problem that when you allocate, OK, from this, from this cache, from this lab, you allocate a lot of chunks, and, but you can overflow only to this, but you can control it. But for this, is also can, can solve it. Basically, um, because the cache is also just a chunk of memory, and, and, can, and when, it's feel, when it's full, it, it has to be allocated new one. And that can be your point, that you allocate new new kernel cache for for this object, and you position it uh, right after that buffer from you can overflow. So basically, you will overflow to that cache. So it can be like in this way, but it's slightly comp more complicated. And on Windows kernel, it's a bit easier because it have let's say just sessions, and in, in every session, it's out of objects, and. In this object, and all the objects uh, which from user mode you can allocate or free or and somehow would control the content. I call them really powerful objects, and so in Windows kernel it's no big deal with like from the kernel caches. And so why is this possible? Because I think in in a really secure oriented operating system it's. Buffer overflows should be mitigated by design. At least the buffer, buffer overflows like we know it nowadays. Um, because the main pinpoints of this operating system is that uh, you can have from user mode directly the control allocate or free memory object in kernel. The other thing is that you can control the content or you can control at fully the content that you can have the same data, uh, like in user mode, except some header. Or you can predict that okay, there will be some uh, some plain pointers or some members which know that the size it will be not higher than this one, this one. So you can somehow the semi control that objects. And the main pit and the really big fail is when this object contains also some plain pointers to on the functions or the some on the buffers which can be later converted to on the vulnerability and can be misused. And also, and this ca these kernels uh, operating systems. Kernels are, are going to be 
object oriented is okay because I think it's the right way to go. Because we need uh, out of modular team introduced into the kernel. But for this, you need to also do some integrity checks because one, when you once alter the object, you can pull all the kernel. And that's a big deal. Another thing is that we have 64 bit uh, operate, uh, 64 bit address space. Uh, and it's, it's introduced a lot of new opportunities. And basically, you, when it will be some secure-oriented, really secure-oriented operating system, that every chunk can be prel like it's basically it's a page I think. That you have before and after, you have some, some sentinels you touch with overflow and will kill you. And in 60-bit 60 60 platform, it can, OK, it's, maybe it's not will be, not will be very efficient, but it can be somehow played and, and can be going to this direction. Uh, so what was covered by Espresso about this vulnerability, it was that uh, what what means for the splice, it was uh, that introducing uh, that uh, triggering the bus back was not so hard because racing was very primitive. But what was not primitive was uh, that you overflow at least from two buffers at the same time. So it means that it's not stable too much because uh, you you can pawn some buffer, but meanwhile you corrupt some on the, on the memory in some kernel. So to successfully pawn it in a level, you have to really fix the, these issues. And you have to have some luck. So it's uh, at the end, it was about, I think, one half of three from four point success. And we also showed some new way how to spray data to kernel memory. It's fast and effective. And some ideas how to play with slop. But uh, when, you will, when you want to play more with this vulnerability, you need uh, to do some more research about what is your target. Because as I said, in this vulnerability, you overflow with some kernel pointer at patch sites. It is the pattern which is repeating. And uh, you need to find your target. Because for example, for uh, last year was some TTI vulnerability in TTI buffers. And it was used um, some good technique that it was Overflow into TTA buffer uh, structure, and it introduced a lot of some function pointers. But on the other side, it, in, it includes also some magic. And when you overwrite this magic, it will panic. In this case, you cannot overwrite this magic because you overwrite just if kernel pointer if and page size, and it's a problem. And the other things that you need uh, when uh, for example, with 64-bit devices, it's going to be enabled also the access mode prevention and execution mode prevention at the user mode data. So it's very good to also play with these things. And I said that it's one hint was that for TTI it was a TTI buffer, but we need to introduce some other thing. Uh, the one thing was uh, for this, when you are uh, trying to uh, you can control the buffer, but to do just some limited scope, because you can overflow to not to every size, but only to some specified sizes, which is 16, 30, 32, and etc. But it's multiplied by size of pointer, so you end up with some limited uh, slabs which you can use, and for this you can need to find your target. And um, uh, last time uh, in, in current in current day, it's it's going some problems uh, with some software security and uh, research, and I want to react a little bit on this one because uh, usually attack chain and vector and is that, for example, because you have antivirus and it protects you uh, and and the companies from getting compromised, but the attack chain is that at, at first time you need to get somehow into attacker's computer. And for that, you need some social, social engineering or some vulnerability. And for example, we focus on vulnerabilities. And uh, when you got vulnerability, it's the other thing that now is proactive solution that it's somehow uh, how, to, how to prevent to install a computer is that you limit uh, the vulnerabilities, the zero days, that you kill the zero days. And that means that it will not. Um, it will be far more expensive to do research and to attack some targets. Because one time when, when this uh, prevention, uh, 
when it's basically a pawn system, it's it's game over for it's a game over for especially for the companies. For user maybe not, but for companies it's game over. So I think the proactive protection is very necessary. And for this, basically we are popping calculators. Because with popping calculators you um killing all the low hanging fruits, you grab it, and what's uh, what's the rest? It's uh, really hard to find. And we are going to this direction, but it's really need to understand this uh, this methodology. And for this, I see on the Twitter that support security research because it's really important. It protects especially the companies. And also, in a lot of com conferences and all the guys asking me basically what we are doing. And um, we are based in China, and we are sec security researchers. And basically, that's and we do a lot of stuffs. And this kind, this kind of, of our history. That's at the beginning. Um, we are core members are the people from the with the good, very good security base and the uh, good uh, code of ethics. A lot of guys working for Microsoft before, and also for. I was working before for antivirus company, and so also other guys was working in China for some other security companies. We also was, and, un and some other guys was working for with uh, Zero the Initiative to cover, cover all the bugs, and we also attend a lot of events like a Pontone, uh, for consecutive years. And also, we get some awards from Zero the Initiative or from Tesla, and uh, we also. Uh, uh, Make some Geekpon events, which is something like Pon to Own, but for devices. And we also su support uh, the young guys with uh, CTF games, etc. For example, uh, we have some interns with uh, Zero CTF or Blue Lotus. Zero CTF won the code gates, and Zero C and uh, Zerops uh, win, win the code gate, and also Zerops and Blue Lotus qualified for this year DevCon. And also, we do something for the geeks. We uh, last year we also uh, get uh, some new vulnerability in Linux, and we report it. And ev when every time when we got some vulnerability, we report it to be fixed. And as uh, this time, we report it, and also afterwards we make some tool for po for geeks that can root the Galaxy S6 phones. And the other thing is that we uh, introduce new techniques and try to share with people. Uh, I make some some highlights. For example, we, we make some WebKit exploitation techniques. Uh, in Syscan, we also make some how to how to play with page tables and pawn with bad roots. And also, we introduce and public uh, the CCC shell coding framework for the people. And also in the, this time at Recon, we'll be present some technique how to buy one uh, bit flip. Basically, by right where you can pawn all the kernel, including the kernel code execution. And also, our team trying to share knowledge worldwide. Uh, this is just some highlights, but I also don't mention that out of dozens of uh, China domestic conferences or lectures and universities. So we're trying to share and spread the knowledge. Now to think that I said that our team uh, creating the Geekpon event, which is basically the um, event when you can pawn, when you can choose your own device and try to pawn it. Just send your proposal proposal to us, and when you think that it's really good, you can go you can go for it, and maybe you can win. It's in some magic date about 10, uh, 24 October, and this will be second year. So you're welcomed. And basically, that's all. But we are hiring at the same for that we want to some interns. And ask the questions. You can pick up some shirts if you want from our event. So if you have any questions, probably mainly for the exploitation, just ask. But any, any others, just ask. I will be happy to answer. Uh, <clears throat> sorry. Hi, I have a question. Uh, can you share some uh, knowledge how or what tools do you use when you're writing a kernel exploit? Because 
Once you trigger the panic, obviously, then mm -hmm. there is a problem. But there is a lot of, well, small steps that you need to, when you're working on your exploit. Do you have any, can you share some, you know, of your experience, what's the best approach and how to achieve it? It's much easier in user space, but when you're in kernel, obviously, kernel panic and you need to start all over. Ah, uh, yeah. For, for example, best tool for uh, researching kernel in Windows is VDBG. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And Android. Uh, and for, for this one, we also imp uh, introduce a CC shell -coding framework when you can basically, uh, after you get some exploits, you want maybe some, to do some kernel mode driver. And it's easier to, in, in this framework, in, on, based on C, you can port, you can basically uh, write the kernel mode driver in, inside. And you have just framework how to jump from user mode to kernel with this framework. That's the one thing. And the second thing is that. Uh, the kernel mode exploitation is not so hard, basically. When you got some, uh, it just it just be distance about the knowledge. But when you're trying to go inside the kernel and how this kernel works, it's as easy as user mode. Sometimes even easier. Uh, so my advice, for example, is try to when you have some panic, uh, try to reproduce and try to debug how, how it looks like and then some static analysis. And then just start with playing with, for example, some CSS shell coding framework, introducing some code inside, and experimenting. And you can, so basically, debugger and this kind of framework can be your best friends. Okay, More questions? Okay, thank you very much. And